Hey guys, uh, so the husband is napping on the sofa, so I thought I'd try to get some filming in. For those of you who don't know, he had shoulder surgery on Friday, it's Sunday, and uh, rotator cuff surgery, just like his wife. <laughs> uh, and we both had the left arm done, and we both have two pins in. Um, only his injury wasn't done at work, he's actually, it's been bothering him for a very long time, and he finally, after I had mine fixed, went in and got his fixed. So anyway... Ah, I thought I'd take some time and film some things. One of the things I've been asked to do is show how I do my doodle bugs. Now, I don't know that I haven't done this before on my channel. I may have. I know I did a video on doing how I do the flowers on the security envelopes. Um, and so I'm not sure. So I'm going to show you guys what I do. This is my jar of bugs. It's actually a little bit low. Uh, I do bugs on... All different kinds of things. These are some that I've done on the inside of security envelopes. And for those of you who don't know what a security envelope is, this is one. They're the kind of envelopes with the windows that you get your bills in <laughs> um, you, that you don't like to see, or doctor's notices, or things like that. Workman's comp, <laughs> you know, it's all a whole other conversation. But the inside of the envelopes are always decorated with these patterns. I'm assuming so that people delivering your mail or sorting your mail can't see through the envelope to snoop and peek, uh, steal your identity, that sort of thing. So they put this pattern in here. It makes it diff more difficult for them to get into your mail, to read your mail. Uh, each one is different. I've seen a lot of different kinds of patterns and different colors. And it's an interesting background to do other art with, artwork with on top of it. And they make interesting basis for doing doodle flowers, doodle bugs, all kinds of things. I also do them as I did these two on uh, book text. And I have been known to do them on painted papers, although I don't have any more of those right now. This is actually just a piece of junk mail. Uh, we have a few investment funds and they send you these paper flyers. Let me see if I can grab one really quick. Um, 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 um. Of course, when I need one really quick, I can't find one really quick. Isn't that always the way? Oh, here we go. So when you have like investment funds and stocks and bonds, they send you these kind of things in the mail and they're on this really thin, thin, thin paper that by itself is nothing special, but it's actually interesting weight paper to use in a collage to paint on or doodle on because it is so thin, some of it disappears into the background, and I just I find it interesting and interesting to feel. So I use it to just put paint on when I'm working on a, a painting, and or wipe my brush off, brushes off on, and just get something that's interestingly painted and marked, like this one is all done. And I've been using pieces of it in collage. So I thought I would draw some birds. Now I always start out with some sort of a black pen. Usually I try to, the black, I usually try to stick with a waterproof pen. We'll zoom in just a little bit here. Now this one, because it's already painted, all you have to do really is draw your bug or your little creature on it and then cut it out and, you know, add it to your jar. Um, you wouldn't have to do too much more to it. I tend to do bugs, but you could do fish, turtles, lizards. There's all kinds of things you could do. Um, I really am drawn to doing a little bee on here. So I like to start with some sort of fat oval or circle shape. And then we'll put some wings. I like something that's loose and sketchy. Give my head. color that in. He is a bee, so I'm going to give him some black stripes. Yeah, I like that. That's cute. Give him a little stinger. So I would just sit here and doodle a bunch of different shapes on here. I would, and on this one, because it's on acrylic paint, I'd let this dry really well and then cut them out and trim them like I've done here. I always leave a little bit of a border because I find that interesting. So then on the book text, 
I would do something similar. This is a page somebody um, gifted me. It was what I could find easily. <laughs> so, so we'll use it. And this time I think we'll do a dragonfly. Now anytime I do a, the bees, I do the same basic shape. I find that to be a really cute bee shape. So I use the same basic shape for all my bees. For the dragonflies, there's a dragonfly design I've actually been doing for kind of for a while. Um, I always start with the head. And I like to do sort of a swirly pattern. And then I'll do kind of a longer, almost an oval body. Then I'll start doing smaller circles for the dragonfly's tail. And I like to have them sort of flying around a corner. And I try to make them a little smaller down. I do like about five. Then you do sort of a skinnier wing. And you can give them some antenna. And we're going to color him in, and I'm going to show you how, how I do that. We're going to let him dry a little bit. I'm actually going to do on here, too, I think I'll do another bee. I like to do bees. Uh, let's see. The only problem with the old book text, you want to be careful. You don't push too hard with your pen, especially with the really old book text, because you're pen nib when you have a fine point like this one it'll go straight through the book text so you don't want to poke holes I drew them a little close together so I'm going to give him some kind of some short antenna and let's do a ladybug down here Something like that. Loose and sketchy. Okay, so we have those. Now on the inside of the security envelope, uh, I need a pair of scissors. Let's see. First thing you have to do is slit it open. have my husband save these for me when he pays bills and things until my box is full and then once my box is full I don't save them anymore until I start running out because they do accumulate quickly okay because I don't want to make this whole thing into bugs um, I'm gonna rip this off we'll save this for something else and I save the windows and use them sometimes when I'm making Happy Mail. I'll actually decorate the paper side of it and sometimes put little treats, um, tags, glitter, or something behind the security envelope. They make an interesting embellishment on their own. So let's cut them off. There we go. There's a piece of plastic stuck here, so let's see if I can get it off. Oh, sort of came off. Okay. So, ladybug. We did a bee, a couple bees. We did a dragonfly. Let's do a couple of butterflies. Looks like I'm kind of low. Okay, so for the butterflies, I just do a long oval body. Nothing complicated. Don't don't freak yourself out before you even get it started. A larger, big wing, upper wing, and then a smaller, sort of a teardrop lower wing. And 
on the right here. And then I usually put some sort of a, a design in the wing. Just doodles, really. Something like that. So now we can go back to this first one because he's pretty dry. Make sure I'm in frame. Okay. And I just leave about an eighth of an inch or so around my bug. You could doodle these on tissue paper or deli paper. If you're doing them on deli paper, you need to make sure you don't um, try to do this on, there's one side of the deli paper that's more waxy than the other. Um, tissue paper would be a better bet. And then if you did, it wouldn't matter how much of a border you left on it when you cut it out because when you collage it, the tissue paper is gonna virtually disappear. But there's a little painted paper bug, isn't he? He's really cute. Okay, that's really cute, I like him. Now on these, obviously we've gotta color them. They're very bland and all my bugs are very colorful. So you don't need anything too complicated. I have this out. This is actually a replacement set for the first one I ever bought. This is the one that's, let me zoom out just a little bit. There we go. This is the one that's actually from my travel bag. Uh, this is, like the one, I have the original one out in the garage, that first watercolor set I ever started working with when I first started back into painting and getting away from things that were more crafty. I got a watercolor set like this one with cakes in it. Um, I might have, I don't remember where I got it. Michaels or Aaron Brothers, probably. I know it was like $5.99. Um, I also realized fairly quickly that I really like this yellow ochre color because that was the one that emptied out first. <laughs> um, and in retrospect, I shouldn't have bought this one when that one started running out of that one particular color. What I should have done is gone and bought a tube of yellow ochre and refilled that empty pan. That would have been more economical. That's not what I did. I've learned a lot since then, but anyway. You don't need fancy watercolors like you've seen in my watercolor videos on the big palette, and I'm going to show you that. I also have been known to color them in with markers. Again, you don't need anything fancy. You ha can use Crayola markers. You, I started with Crayola. I have some distress markers here. I've got some Tombow. I've got some fluorescent markers from the dollar uh, Japanese dollar store. I do have Letraset Aqua Markers. These are you, my preferred pen for doing the doodle bugs and doodle flowers, um, along with the distress markers, but you don't have to have them. You could use anything, whatever you have. Um, let's first do, I'm really wanting to see what these watercolors look like on this um, security envelope. So let's start with that. I'm gonna get some water here. And let's start with this blue color. I've always loved this really bright blue color. Oh, see, that's pretty. And yes, because this is water soluble, as are the Letraset markers I have and the Distress markers, when you collage them down onto your journal page, this paint or marker could run. So you have to really try not to get the top of your bug wet with wet glue, or go ahead and use a dry glue, like a glue stick, or if you have a Xyron sticker machine, and use that to adhere your bug to your page. That's already cute. I love the way that looks. You get a similar look with the Letraset markers. My paint rag. Okay, let's try for this kind of orchidy color. Oh yeah, that's pretty too. I like that. Once you have your bug sketched, it's not 
you know, it's not hard. We're not looking for a Rembrandt painting here. You're creating easy, simple, quick, fun little doodle bugs. You're expressing yourself in your artwork, even with the embellishments. So don't feel like you have to meet any particular standards. I'm not even doing shading, I'm just filling in with color. Okay, now for the body, I do want something darker, so I'm gonna go with, I think this dark brown here. Yeah, I like that. Now if you did wanna add a little bit of shading, I would probably take this brown just a little bit of it. And add it to some parts of the wing, the outer edges, the inner corners. Not too much, just a little bit. Just like that. That's cute. You let them dry and then cut them out. Now let's try. I haven't even tried these Japanese markers yet, so let's try those. So this, you know, real cheap, little inexpensive. I don't know how many. There's 18 colors in here. So you can just start with something simple. All right. So now we have these. I've got these. I don't even know how these write. I haven't taken them out of the packages yet. These are more highlighters, it says, so I'm assuming that means they're translucent. And these are, just says fluorescent pen, so I don't know. That ought to be interesting. I also have these Tombow markers that I got to add to my water-soluble marker drawer because I wanted some really bright colors that I didn't have and that don't come in the other brands. So this will work just fine, so we may use some of them. All right. Let's start with this blue color. That's pretty. You don't have to do your bugs in realistic colors. In fact, they're prettier if you don't do that. And usually when I have a sheet of bugs like this, I take the one color and go around kind of to each bug and see if I want to add the color somewhere to each bug. over here and I have a number of purples. Let's see. Yeah, that one will work. Yep. So I want to make our dragonfly here two tone. And then if I wanted to, I could take a brush with a little bit of water. Be careful about how much water you put on this book paper because it's not really intended for working, being worked with this way. And this water will blend the two markers just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. I like that. So let's see.
And frequently what I'll do is draw a whole bunch of bugs. Sometimes in the evenings when I'm sitting in front of the TV with a husband watching one of our shows or a movie. And then I will, you know, just save all of these up and then I'll come in and I'll color them all at once. So let's see. better than the blue. And then if we take the blue and do this, I like that. I like these pens from Daiso. Always on the lookout for stuff in art supplies in neon colors because you don't see tons of it. And I love to give a lot of my work up pop of something in neon, whether it's neon paint or neon markers or neon pencils or whatever it is. It's a nice addition to your stash of supplies. I know as far as pencils are concerned, some really great neon colored pencils by Crayola. They're not expensive. Yeah, I like that. That's really good. Um, let's color the rest of our ladybug in. Oops. I almost dumped all my markers onto the floor. Um, let's see. I have this pink Tombow. Yeah, it's a nice bright color. adding a little bit of shading to our ladybug. And I have a Tombow blender pen. Which you can use a blender pen or you can use water. Either way you want to be gentle with your paper because like I said this is old book paper so it's really not Nobody ever thought you'd be doodling on it, that's for sure. Okay, so now let's figure out, oops, what color to make our dragonfly wings. What color is this one? It's another light blue. Yellow? I have a lighter blue. Maybe that'll work. Oh, I think that's too green. So in a lot of times when I'm doing these doodles, you'll see, if, before I cut them out, you'll see a lot of this at the bottom. That's a good color. Because I'm testing the marker on the edge of the paper. Now, if you're participating in the Crazy Island Family Embellishment Swap, where we're doing some of these bugs or creatures for each one of our swap mates, then you could cut them out for them. You could leave them on this sheet and let them cut them out. I think either way would be fine. If you're not part of the swap and you'd like to be, there is a Crazy, uh, Crazy Island Family Embellishment Swap video on my playlist here on YouTube. Make sure you watch it and read the instructions. You should also probably be a member of Crazy Island Family on Facebook. If you're not, it's easy to go request to join. We approve just about everybody. You don't have to be a member of Crazy Island Family, but it's helpful if you are. And uh, follow the instructions in the swap video to join the swap. And in the meantime, if you just want to make bugs for no reason, you can do that. I will tell you that sometimes with these bugs too, what I do before I would call these done, is I would take a white pen of some sort. And let's see if this one will work. 
I don't think that one's going to work on here. I think what I want is a Signo. This is a Uniball Signo. And to give them a really extra special pop, I frequently take a white gel pen or a some kind of a white pen. This one doesn't want to write, so that happens. I have something else that I picked up at Daiso are some Japanese dollar store whiteout pens. I actually haven't tried them yet. I just now opened them, so let's see if we can get one of them going. I can smell it. Oh, here we go. Oh, these are nice. I like these. Nice and bright white. So to give it an extra pop, frequently what I'll do is add dots, stripes, other little doodles on my bugs with a white pen. And it just gives them an extra pop. So don't be afraid to experiment and play. Create some bugs. They're a great addition to your Happy Mail, to your journal pages, to any of your other artwork. Whether you're doing journaling by fives or you're doing a negativity smackdown, these are a great addition to your stash of stuff you can use. Don't forget to go out and have a great day, everybody. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later.